Where are we? September? What time is, it? is this September's listener episode? Yeah. I think so. Sure. Yeah. Welcome. Happy September. It's almost fall. And if it's October, happy second September. <laughs> oh, well, it's not October. I think we'd be prepared for Halloween month. Well, yeah. actually, I don't think we'd be prepared. I no. think we'd expect to be prepared and then wouldn't be. I was saying, yeah, because I thought you were saying, like, we're not prepared enough that we would be two months in advance on this. And I was like, yeah, well, also, that's true. There's also that. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, anyway, welcome to our listeners episode for September. This is where we read the stories that you send to us on our website. And that's where we drink dot com. And um, Eva picks them out so we don't know them ahead of time. And we put them out. We put this episode out on the first of every month, our listeners episode. So That's if right. you are new here and you're listening backwards and this is your first one, welcome to, welcome. Your, to uh, listeners to episodes. Some month in 2020 that we're not really sure anymore. <laughs> um, it could be March still. I'm not really sure. It, it, I certainly hope not because <laughs> it feels like it's been eight years since March. Um, oh, before we start, can I just give a little shout out? Because yeah. CK has been, he's back at it with Mercs I and Monsters. I saw your sweatshirt. Yeah. And I, with with Finn and CK on it. And I feel like we haven't given him a shout out in a while. And Mercs and Monsters did Bermuda Triangle recently, which was really creepy and one of my favorite topics. So um, I just want to give them a little shout out. And they're, uh, his merch is very comfortable. so And we love CK. And also, in case people are wondering, on the back of your sweatshirt is also a big ass thing of popcorn. Yeah, that's right. For his That's what drew my series. attention. Yeah. It's, uh, I love it. I didn't even realize, like, I knew it was there, but then I put it on today and looked in a mirror and was like, whoa. There it is. <laughs> um, anyway, so okay. check them out, .com, Um And by them, I mean CK and his dog, Finn. Yes, the OG fan <laughs> of And That's Why We Drink. Yeah, he even does uh, Patreon. Actually, he does bonus listener stories on our Patreon. So he's a, he's a gem. Anyway, I feel like we don't give him enough uh, right. shout outs anymore. So we'll just make it a thing at the end where we say, and that's why we love Support CK. CK so much, always, forever. Anyway, here are some of your listener stories, uh, handpicked by Eva herself. That's right. And, uh, One and so only. we'll all get shocked together. <laughs> a lot of gasping. A usually. lot of gasping from both parties, I uh -huh. think. So uh, I'll do the first one because that's what I always M do. likes to go first. That's true. Uh, Christine, this one is called Charles Manson tried to pick up my grandma. Oh my gosh. And this is from Kate who goes by she, her. Thank you for normalizing pronouns, Kate. Um, Kate says, hello, M. Christine and Eva and hello to all furry companions. My name is Kate and I have a chilling story to share with you today. So let's get into it. Real wasted opportunity to say, let's Correct. crack into it, wow. but that's okay. Wow. Strike uh, one. <laughs> strike one, Kate. Also no lemon reference, which strike one and a half. Hurtful. Wow. <laughs> to only one of us. So yeah, only there's a petrified the fruit. While I know, uh, while I now live in Atlanta, Georgia, my whole family and I are originally all from California. In the late 60s, my grandpa was in a popular local band in L.A. and my grandma was a local model and was mainly along for the ride with, with my grandpa's band. Wow, Sounds like a good stars. gig. stars. Yeah. They like to say that they were just, quote, young hippies living the rock and roll life, but still showered. Okay, so that's an important caveat. The perfect <laughs> hybrid, I'd say. Um being in the early their early 20s, they uh, they attended a lot of house parties and went to many clubs. And one summer night, my grandmother decided to go to a house party in Hollywood. And she says that as soon as she got there, she knew the vibe was off, but she decided to shrug it off, grab a drink, and try to enjoy the night. And all through the night, strange young women kept approaching her. Oh, my God ignoring the concept of personal space completely and kept inviting her to spend time on the ranch they lived on. Ew. So they were like recruiting at Don't this party. Don't go back to anyone's ranch ever. Mm -mm, nope. That's my rule. Unless it's like, you know, Captain America's ranch. And I'm like, okay. I guess. If I die, at least it's by Captain America. That's, That's the one. <laughs> one um, exception. <laughs> uh my grandma politely declined as the whole thing felt odd. And later that night, she was approached by a greasy looking man uh -huh. who was very creepy and a Ugh. master manipulator. He tried to flatter my grandma and kept trying to get her to join his group. Ew. That's pretty also like direct. We're not even trying to do like the love bombing at this point. Yeah. It's not even like, let's get to, let's get to like each meet other. Our, meet our community and see how at peace. And Why don't you just like come check it out? Here. It's like, join my group. Join me. Um, my greasy group. <laughs> my greasy group. Um, luckily my grandma is a very smart woman and was able to shake him off and leave the party safely. She thought the whole ordeal was very strange, but didn't think anything much after that until a few years later, she saw the man's face again, in the newspaper and realized the man that she had met was the notorious serial killer, Charles Manson, Damn. whose MO was to recruit girls and give them horrible criminal assignments as well as he himself doing them as well. Mm. I've always been interested in true crime and I'm a very careful person. But ever since I was told this story, I've been especially paranoid. 
Thank you for always providing me with a laugh when I'm driving, showering, generally existing. I love your show, and I hope to see y'all on tour one day. I we like, hope to be on tour again. One I day. like how she insists that she also showers again at the end. She's yeah. like, I listen when I'm showering. Did like, you get to that? Be clear. We're still a clean fan. We're still showering to this day, actually. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty incredible. Okay. I think I'm probably not alone in my many skin frustrations. Um, I have, I know we both have, we've actually discussed this. We have different skin concerns, right? So yes. mine, I have like worried it's so dry and I'm getting fine lines. And I have very oily skin, or at least I don't realize it until I wake up and then I'm like, <laughs> like sweating but it's oil it's very gross <laughs> we are so happy that we found curology because it felt like nothing else before could really measure up so whether you're trying to take control of acne fine lines dark spots or clogged pores curology will customize a prescription formula with three active ingredients picked for you to tackle your individual skincare needs yeah so i uh so we took a little quiz about our faces. And it's so fun. It's it's very fun to like be so critical about myself, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> but so I was saying, you know, I have, you know, oily skin. And I also have, you know, acne, not too much, but still enough that I worry. And I've got dry spot or dark spots and, you know, it's a, it's a goddamn mess. We're full so, of problems, always. <laughs> I, so I got a treatment plan back from my dermatology provider. I got an email from someone named Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> and Sarah was like, look, you're out of whack, but I, I know how to fix it. So I got this custom formula for myself. It's got three ingredients. I got these instructions on how I should uh, use the formula. Um, I'm supposed to go to sleep with it on my face at night. So hopefully yeah. it it saves the day and Sarah's my superhero. That's right. Shout out to Sarah. Shout out to Melinda who helped me with my skincare needs and wrote in and I had like specific concerns about like the ingredients and she was really helpful in finding um, a new ingredient when one of them wasn't going to be a good fit. So it's really cool. We're really excited to get our our Curology and uh, we're going to update you on how beautiful we are in a few few weeks. We really shouldn't have to because you should be sending in (laughs) comments about how we're glowing and, and dewy and it's not oily anymore. So looking very forward to how our faces turn out in a little bit. Get a powerful skincare treatment made for you today. Go to Curology.com slash drink for a free 30-day trial. Just pay for shipping and handling. That's C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash drink to unlock your free 30-day trial. See Curology.com for all details. So I think we're all going through a tough time right now. So if there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist like it has for us. You can start communicating in under 48 hours, and it's not a a crisis line. It's not uh, self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. And there's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. Yeah, it's BetterHelp has really, uh, to be honest, helped all of us. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your counselor, which has been really great during quarantine because you don't need to go into a waiting room. You can uh, contact your counselor anytime, anywhere, whenever you need, and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. I used to do those during my lunch break uh, with my (laughs) therapist, (laughs) so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. And it's more affordable than traditional office counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. You can visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily at www.betterhelp.com slash reviews. You can also visit betterhelp.com slash drink. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Amazing. So there's a special offer for And That's Why We Drink listeners. You can get 10% off your first month at www.betterhelp.com slash drink. That's betterhelp.com slash drink. I have a story for you, Em. This one is called My Almost Kidnapping. Cool. And it is by Hollis, he, him pronouns. Thank you for normalizing pronouns, Hollis. Yes. Uh, hi, y'all. To jump right into it, nobody's cracking into it today, which is a little bit wow. off, off-putting. Just jumping. Yeah. Just jumping. Just and... jumping and falling and yeah. <laughs> tumbling down the stairs. Just somersaulting right into it. <laughs> to jump right into it, I was almost kidnapped when I was around 11 over the summer between 6th and 7th grade. Mm. My mom had dropped me off at the library while she went grocery shopping, and I was going absolutely buck wild picking out books because I was a huge reader back in the day. It's the mental illness and escapism, isn't it? 
yeah, I mean, I can I can confirm that on my end. It's mental illness, isn't it? <laughs> That's a TikTok, I think. Is that know. what it is? Maybe. It's mental illness, isn't it? I feel so dumb. I'm not cool and hip enough for that. I, I've seen it when it's like, I just spent $200 at the grocery store and now I'm ordering Postmates. Oh, I and it's see. like, it's mental illness, isn't it? Okay, and it's like, that's definitely yeah, what it says because it says... I-N-N-I-T. In it, yep, yep. Well, about halfway into the trip and probably 10 chosen books deep because that's how many I tended to get on any given trip, I realized I'd forgotten both my library card and shiny brand new cell phone. Mm. Absolutely absurd to think that I'd ever forgot my phone nowadays, but I wasn't used to carrying it around yet. So I had no way to contact my mom to tell her to get my library card or just pick me up, so I had to wait for her. Instead of sitting down with one of the books I wanted to get and reading, I put all the books back and proceeded to go into the main lobby that was past the little metal detector things that would go off if you dared to leave without Mm. checking a book, checking out a book. So I had nothing to read while I waited. I have no idea what my thought process was. Maybe I just didn't want to start a book and not be able to finish when she came to pick me up, but she probably had her card, so I could have used it to check out my books. Who knows? I was one weird-ass kid. Nothing can explain my thought process. But so there I was in the main lobby, sitting next to the entrance doors, just people watching as everyone came and went, because there was literally nothing else for me to do. Except maybe go back inside and read a fucking book, you absolute dumbass. That was not me. That was Hollis speaking to himself, to be clear. Can you imagine if I was like, yeah, you dumbass, Uh in the middle of a story? Uh, Eventually, this one lady who looked to be in her mid-40s was leaving the library when she glances at me, then does a double take before rushing over to me. Mm. While I'd been watching her, I'd also been 80% spacing out, so her suddenly sitting next to me on the bench made me jump. She immediately put her hand on mine and told me she thought she'd come to the library that day to return some books, but was wrong. And I asked her what she meant in a very small, spooked voice because I was 11 and didn't know you could tell adults to fuck off. Uh-huh. And to be fair, I'm now 23 and still sometimes don't know. I'm I'm 29 and I still don't know, so don't worry. Also, like, like a little flair of the dramatics there where you sit down and say something cryptic like that, expecting them to be like, what do you mean? Ex- exactly. To be like, I thought I, like, imagine a stranger. Yeah. I thought I was coming to drop off some books, but I was wrong. <laughs> it's I, like, yeah. What are you going to say? Oh, that's nice. Anyway. Like, I'm, it, glad, uh, I'm glad you figured out what you were here for then. Bye. Like, that's so lovely. Thanks for holding my hand. Right. What? <laughs> Ugh. So gross. Um... Da, da, da. But she proceeds to tell me that actually she was... Oh, dear Christ. Okay, here we go. She proceeds to tell me that actually she was sent by God to save me okay. right now. Bye. From what? Oh, she kept calling me a lost soul, told me I didn't have to live this way. I'm assuming that she meant, I don't know. Listen, I don't know these references. What? I'll teach you. What's AFAB? AFAB. Uh, AFAB is uh, assigned female at birth. Okay, good. That's what I thought. But then I was like, I... I Sorry, I blanked too because I was, I was, I had my TikTok hat on and I was like, I'm ready to well, teach you something see, cool. I'm and then AFAB. about ACAB all the time. So now uh, like, I'm just... No. Okay. AFAB is a way of saying yeah. like you know trans what, slash non binary slash gender non conforming slash etc. Right. That was. But like you were born in a female assignment. Body. Right. Okay. Makes yes. sense. Um, I just love all these asides in this story. Okay. <laughs> I'm assuming that she meant I don't know like being an AFAB who wears V necks with shorts and looks 15 when they're 11. Who knows? <laughs> and that I absolutely needed to go to her church with her. That was just down the street. It'll be super quick. I swear. Oh, Ooh. Oh, Can you no. imagine being like it'll be super quick if you have to like like defend what you're suggesting yeah yeah yeah. like then you probably it, it's already shady. maybe take an inward look because even wonder. you know it's shady if you're doing like a double if you're excusing the behavior before it's even questioned uh-huh. yeah exactly i told her i was waiting for my mom which wasn't a good enough answer for her because this was my eternal soul we were talking about my afab soul <laughs> my, a- my little afab <laughs> v-neck soul <laughs> so she put her hand on my arm and said that her priest was wait oh for god's sake that her priest was waiting for us and my mom would understand this was important did i want to go to hell yes oh boy for again wearing a v-neck shirt in the summer or whatever i kind of freaked out over her putting her hand on me again so i jumped up and told her i had to leave before running into the bathroom to hide in the stalls which one what if you're afab which one like I guess oh which bathroom the maybe the maybe just to get away from her i would maybe, I, would, I would say the employee bathroom hopefully oh <laughs> like, or like I, a but, staff bathroom yeah yeah, yeah yeah i was like just get away from like because if you go into like a single person bathroom hopefully so you can like lock it something with a lock yeah because yeah. i was afraid that this is now crawling turn under into the like, stalls or something exactly this person's chasing okay you actually we're about to get this answer so. <gasps> okay i'm glad i was on it <laughs> 
I'm glad we ask immediately before <laughs> you tell us because we insist on talking. You said you said AFAB and then you said bathroom and then my brain by uh by habit is now like which one and there's someone chasing you. I also you. said eternal soul and you don't seem to be hung up on that one. I hear that a lot from the Duggars. Got it, it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um running into the bathroom to hide in the stalls. Looking back, I kind of regret not going into the library where people were, but I'm not sure anyone would have helped. I ran into the handicap stall, locked the door and backed up against the wall before I heard the door open and it was her. This is a monster, not a this woman. This is horrifying. She followed me into the bathroom. She walked right up to the stall I was in. I could see her feet <gasps> and asked me to go to her church again, insisting my mom would understand me leaving because I would be going with a trustworthy person to do something important. This was for my soul. I had to. After a couple of minutes of me not responding, the stall door rattled like she was trying to open it. Oh, for go- oh my goodbye. God. And then yeah. she sighed before saying, if I changed my mind, I could find her at the church down the street from the library. Parentheses. There were literally three of those. So like, sure, not asking which one. And she left. I waited maybe five minutes after I heard her leave before coming out. And thankfully, she was actually gone. Maybe this person like, no wonder you don't read anymore. I'd be like, look. <laughs> libraries are not my jam <laughs> like, i'm out of it yeah i this is traumatizing enough um when my mom finally came and picked me up i didn't tell her about what had happened because i was worried she wouldn't let me go to the library alone anymore priorities yo and while <laughs> so you're looking for an excuse not to read but i think uh-huh. i think he uh didn't didn't take it that way i would have just yeah, yeah. however i needed to you're like actually i once heard a story about a person who was traumatized <laughs> at a library so that's someone why else I don't has read. had a bad time there and therefore i sympathize yeah i had to i had to actually experience <laughs> hearing this story third right. hand Okay, um, I was worried she wouldn't let me go to the library alone anymore. Priorities, yo. And while I've posted this story on Reddit, told my best friends, and detailed it to my current therapist, I still haven't told her or anyone else in my family. I'm just like that. Fun fact also, I didn't realize that this traumatized me until I told my friends earlier this year and that it contributed to my religious trauma specifically until I told my therapist. Go to therapy, everyone. It really helps. Sorry if this was a little long and I hope you enjoyed it. I spent a long time debating if I should send this in or a different story about my life, like about my haunted house or high school kind of stalker or a couple other things that have happened to me or my family. Thank you so much, Hollis. Wow, thank God you did not go with that person. Thank God. And like, it's, you couldn't have blamed a child for going. Like, what, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I'm a, I'm a, a a church going woman and you need to come with me to protect and your, your mom soul. wants you to yeah uh-huh. yeah it's like that's frightening um so thank you hollis for that story sorry yeah. i like butchered some of the commentary no no i no, apologize no. uh okay so the next one i have is from bex who goes by they them thank you for normalizing pronouns bex, bex. Uh, hi everyone. I emailed once before with the scariest experience I've ever had. Last week I was visiting with my brothers who were with me when this happened and they told me additionally terrifying details that I had either repressed or simply forgotten. And what I thought the original story was, um, was that my, uh, my mom on the verge of divorce with my dad took all three of the kids on a road trip to see new parts of the U S and decide if we want to move to Wyoming with her. Um, Coming from California, the thought of moving to Wyoming was terrifying enough, and somewhere close to the Yellowstone National Park around 2 in the morning, we decided to pull over to the side of the road so my mom could get some sleep. We had been looking for a hotel, but not having much money and needing to get on the road early, my mom decided against spending money to sub for sub four hours. Mm -hmm. Um, We were driving in the forest, and I remember looking up through the back window into the night and and through the trees, and suddenly I'm waking up. We're moving again. And I still see trees set against a pale blue morning sky. I sit up, look at my brothers and ask, why are we moving again? And three shocked faces stare back at me as my brothers ask, you don't remember? What? Okay. My whole body just like, just like goose count out. They then recounted that. I had sat straight up 20 or 30 minutes after we had stopped at the woodsy pullout and I had screamed, we have to get out of here. They're coming. They're coming. Okay. Um, no. Pointing and looking out the back window, I wouldn't stop screaming until we moved. Oh my God. Not one to get caught in some crazy, in some crazy stuff. My mom drove away and I had fallen back asleep. I have <laughs> <Good> absolutely <night. laughs> no memory of this. Looking back, I'd wondered if a guardian angel had woken me up and used me to get my family the heck out of there. End of story, or so I thought for the last 15 years, and turns out oh, there was... Oh, that's already so scary. I <laughs> didn't know there enough. was more. Okay. Uh, or so I thought, and for the last 15 years. Turns out there were some other events that happened in uh, this story. So my mom had seen a man dressed in an old-time black suit walking Goodbye. towards the car. Goodbye. 
not more than 30 feet away from us approaching the back of the van. She saw me in the rear. She saw him in the rear view mirror and moments before she saw him, my mom and older brothers heard swing music starting to play all around us. Ew. This is like a time slip or something. Ooh. I don't like this. I one, don't like it. One either. tiny bit. Wow. One my little. arms are bumpy. Mine happening? too. I feel like my whole body is a pain in pain. My younger brother remembers seeing my mom's face as she stared out the black window where I had been screaming and pointing to as she watched the man in the suit approach our car. My younger brother still dreams of swing music and creepy ass <laughs> men in a dark forest and each revealed the swing music and the, each dream reveals the swing music and the man. Both details my older brother confirmed with him about 10 years later. We hadn't spoken about it in a really long time. And I still remember none of these details or screaming out that they were approaching us. It gives me serious heebie-jeebies to even type it out. Going to go pray and ask my very, uh, ask for, um, and, and ask the sassy tarot cards to bless my dreams. <sighs> Um, I'll send some vibes your way. Please. P.S. I recently came out to my family as gender fluid slash queer and using they them pro uh, pronouns. Uh, this show has helped me through and gave so much hope. I learned about self acceptance and self love because of you. Your friendship gives me hope. <laughs> also attached is a pic of my I dog. It. I see it. And uh, <laughs> she is 19 years old. <gasps> she looks like a spring chicken. Look at that happy puppy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so sweet. I don't know if we're allowed to show their face, but there's there's the puppy dog. Oh, my gosh. So sweet. <gasps> so sweet. That's, that's beep, beep, beep. I'm just not going to lie. That is a creepy, creepy, creepy story. Um, And I, I was already scared. I thought it was done. I thought that Ooh. was it. I thought the missing detail was that they woke up and screamed. I, I mean swing music i've just never heard of anything more terrifying that's like if you could pick a creepy music I if i like. time traveled to the 20s and all i heard was swing every second i'd be like who's killing me? and you know what's weird is that who's, who's killing me now um <laughs> who you know what's weird is like seeing the the guy walking in a suit and like why oh. if you were in the middle of nowhere wyoming why would a person be walking around in a suit and why would Maine? they start up the music that like <laughs> why they clearly had something in mind and the fact that multiple people saw it it wasn't like a dream you know what i mean no thank you Ugh. no thank you um but Ooh. also thank you for sending that in yikes yike that was bex yeah yeah thank you bex okay <sighs> Ooh, that really gave me the creeps. I hated that one. So uh, this is from Abigail, who uses they, them pronouns. Thank you, Abigail. Um, hey, my wonderful, wonderful, and that's why we drink fam. I'm here to beg for advice. Uh-oh. Don't look at us. We, we're not the people to help you. You can beg. <laughs> you can that's beg. fine. We'll probably just <laughs> beg alongside you for someone else. Um, because, well, I fucked up. My name is Abigail22, and in May, I signed my very first lease to an apartment. Uh-oh. Okay, Carry on. Super exciting, right? Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> you may or may not have read about my listener story about my ghost cat saving my real cat. Oh, my. Since then, some hella spooky shit has started happening. I've had sleep paralysis four times since I moved in, which has never happened to me before. Each time I'm laying in bed and see a man standing in my bedroom doorway just screaming. Just screaming? Just screaming. Just screaming. Just screaming on through. Just screaming his little Don't head off. Don't mind me. Being dramatic. Not at me, but still scaring the hell out of me. Then my string lights that I have around my kitchen bar start falling while I was sleeping. I work nights and sleep days, but normally wake up after it's dark outside again. It's always unsettling to wake up in a pitch black apartment when I know I turn my string lights on before bed. <gasps> ah. Uh -huh. Since I've been having these things with a capital T happen. I decided to do some research on the property, which I should have done before I signed the one-year lease. I learned that last year... Oh, God. What? <sighs> I learned that last year two little girls drowned in the pool. Okay. Tragic, but what really sent chills down my spine is that in 2012, a drug deal gone bad led to someone setting a building on fire, which killed a 20-year-old man on the third floor when the firemen couldn't reach him in time. Oh, shit. I started digging around doing my research and asking management and my maintenance men which unit the guy died in. Bet you can see where this is going. Mine. Uh -huh. He died in my bathtub <gasps> from smoke inhalation after he woke up too late to get out. Then the oh, wall no. collapsed and he was found in the rubble. Oh my god oh my god see okay this is um i don't have a bathtub in my apartment but anytime we've been to a hotel with a bathtub i can't even think about getting in a bathtub i'm like enjoying a bath yeah I'm even like, i'm always like we're gonna take a bath and you're like well there's probably a dead i i just think like there. someone has died in a hotel bathroom in some way 
and it could be the one that's mine. It could be like, that one. I and you I just want, you've Googled that before, remember? Yeah. And remember, yeah. I mean, you did. No, it, I had, and yeah. then I even like I had some weird. Um, it really like got to me, and at some point, I started bringing flip flops even wearing the shower because I was like, there, like a dead body could have been here. And like, I know it's like <laughs> they maybe replace the entire goddamn tub, and it's not the same thing. But I just feel like I can like their energy is oh, still God. there. And but the flip flops will stop it from. Well, I stayed in <laughs> when I was in Vermont. The I, fish I just don't want my flesh to touch a, a story that I'm not a part of. But like, <laughs> okay, uh, in Vermont. I stayed in this like motor lodge that had a hot tub in it that clearly was there since like the sixties oh or seventies. Oh and I was like, absolutely. Well, there's probably scarier things that have happened in that than dying. Probably. Like, really... I was like, I don't even want to know the storylines for why. That's people... a thing I don't want to touch with my body. <laughs> I did not touch no, it. No, thank you. Oh. I certainly thought about it. And then I was like, <laughs> I probably should do Oh. Boy. Anyway, bathtubs freak me out across the board, especially in like hotels where like multiple people with multiple Truly. stories. And like for whatever but... reason, like in those early like 90s and 2000s horror movies, it was yeah. always like in a bathtub, someone drowned or like what, yeah. like, uh, what lies beneath and she's Oof. in the bathtub. I mean, no, thank you. Okay. Anyway, um, he died in my bathtub from smoke inhalation after he woke up too late to get out. Then the wall collapsed and he was found in the rubble. Since learning this, I've been showering at my parents' or uh-huh. boyfriend's place. I don't blame you. I don't, yeah, I don't either. And I'm terrified to sleep here alone. What do I do? Oh, see, here we go. This I is see. where you, you beg for advice. advice. Well, M says leave, which isn't helpful. Never take a bath again, apparently. <laughs> Continue having paranoia like me. Is this arson victim the reason my sleep paralysis is just a man screaming? <gasps> I didn't even put those two oh, things together. that was my thought, too, because I was like, why would you be screaming? At first, I thought it was the girls had died. and maybe, That really could. That... It, but the fire makes more sense. In your doorway, yeah. which makes me wonder, do you think that he sees them and is like, help me? Or do you think it's just like or replaying? Like residual, like maybe screaming it was like, in the doorway. Maybe he was at, in the doorway freaking out that he was probably going to die. And that's like the last like real like bout of well, and also had. my wonder I wonder if like they're since our string lights come down and are and, like turn off, I wonder if it's like oh. trying to get their attention. I don't know. Ew. It's so creepy though. I yeah, I, I don't know how you do this, but I would like, have someone come in and bless that space and like help that thing. Yes, move maybe on. cleanse it, I guess. Like, would be my it, I think that's what our listeners would say. Yeah. To cleanse it. I, not by me. I don't know how to do that, but yeah. Oh no, no. Like it. find someone who knows how to do it. Not help them see the not our dumbasses. Anyway, okay. What do I do? Is this arson victim the reason my sleep paralysis is just a man screaming? I still have eight months of this lease. By the way, and it's quarantine, so they're probably stuck oh, at home. No. You know what I mean? Is it, uh, but, 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 I still have eight months on this lease left, and I can't afford to leave. I know I'm just a listener struggling. You're not just a listener. You're now... And you're not just... You're struggling. now a, a character in my nightmares. <laughs> well, also, I wonder, it'd be interesting, it, not for this person, but it, for me... Uh, as like someone who doesn't have to deal with this, it would be interesting in theory to like sleep on the couch or like at a different angle where you see the doorway from a different position at some point and see if they're still facing oh, inward yes, at the bathroom question. or did they move with you? And to also still- is the bathroom like attached to your room or is it in a different part of the apartment? Cause that would right. change up why they're in your doorway. Cause yeah, if they're, if they're following you and wherever you fall asleep, you still experience them, then maybe it's more for your attention yeah, to get your on attention the couch and let us know what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. Be on the complete opposite side of the apartment. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Um, I know I'm just a listener struggling, but my family doesn't believe in the paranormal. My boyfriend says I'm overreacting and I'm at a complete loss. Throw well, the whole boyfriend away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you have time, I'd love some advice. I love the show. Thanks for giving me something other than my living situation to scare the shit out of me. Abigail. <sighs> Listen, gotta call that priest. Listen, I don't know what to do except that I would maybe find somebody who knows how to cleanse, like like a real actual professional who knows how to do that. Tell your boyfriend you want to switch apartments. Yeah, that's a great idea. He doesn't care, does he? So have your boyfriend stay there yeah. for the time being, and you can trade. Yeah, yeah, I love that idea. All right, well, thank you, and also I'm very thank sorry you, you're going through that. Woof. Uh, what I have to say this is from Rachel, um, and Rachel totally probably by accident does not normalize pronouns at least in this email so i'm gonna we're gonna assume they them until further notice just because i don't want to further notice until i don't want to i don't want to rachel gets called out on air and (laughs) also this could be an older email it's probably yeah there's probably it's i don't think it's actually like rachel's fault or anything um but i don't know your pronouns and so i don't want to lean one way or the other so i'd rather stay at an an even keel an even neutral thing so 
Anyway, just falling down the stairs in a very neutral way. We stumble on on through. Uh huh. Yeah, it, there it is. Bingo. So this one, I hate the subject line already, Rachel. You're really throwing me for a loop. I found my babysitter was I found out my babysitter was murdered while watching a TV show with my mom. <gasps> Oh, no. So many questions. So many So questions. much to unpack. I thought it was going to say while watching a TV show with my babysitter, and I was going to be like, ah! oh. <laughs> it's all bad. It's all bad. Uh, hello, fellow drink aficionados. Oh, I love it. Uh, I actually found out about this podcast through Beach to Sandy. Wait, really? I'm only on episode four right now, and I'm ob- obsessed. That's so nice. Thank you. I wanted to share this story. Uh, what do you call them? Call them Beach to Sandy years. You know what? We don't. I don't think we have a name for them, for like listeners. I mean, I'm trying to think of one. Beach Jeez. goers. I don't know. Beach. Jeez. Maybe we do, and I'm just blanking. Uh, Yelpers. Yelp elite status. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're the one stars. The we stars. call them. I don't know. Yeah, we sand. we say we'd give you six stars if we could to to people who write in and stuff. Sand the sand monsters. Okay. Yeah. They, so, uh, thank you, sand monster. For, <laughs> that's your new pronoun. Sand, sand monster. Sand monster Rachel. <laughs> um. So where all are we? Who the hell? Knows at this point? <laughs> I like. I don't even know what month it is. Who knows? Um. Oh, I wanted to share the story that I thought you guys would be interested in because it's extremely creepy and baffles my family even to. Oh, this so day. see, they're on episode four, so they don't even properly know our pronouns probably at this point so probably who's not. to say what their pronouns are uh it's it actually it's sand monster so, so oh it's just you, you already said that. it yeah you decided yeah. i forgot when i was five which is back in the early 2000s my family lived in japan for a few years i am the youngest of four with three older brothers my dad worked full-time at a university in tokyo my mom was a stay-at-home mom however she volunteered a lot so we needed babysitters every so often We had this babysitter for a few years who actually lived with us for a short time, and she was from the States and just wanted to travel while she was young and was working for families as a live-in nanny or a part-time babysitter. That's a pretty nice deal. I remember her being very sweet and extremely kind-hearted. Before we moved back to America, she left us, and we had never heard from her again. Oh. Uh -oh. Uh Uh-oh. We didn't think anything of it. Because she was just a young girl in her 20s and was a wandering soul. I was going to say, all the babysitters I've never heard from again, I don't... I have one who's actually one of my very close friends now. That's cool. Which is weird because I am the age she was when she used to babysit me. That's really trippy. And now, and then when I was a teenager, I, it was like a full circle because I babysat Babysit- her kids. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's very that's sweet. so sweet. Well, so sweet. Um... Flash forward to 2017, my mom and I are huge crime TV show junkies. Hell yeah. And I blame my obsession on her allowing me to watch CSI and Law and Order at 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. I can also thank also, Linda for that. I was going to say, I'll always blame the mother. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we're just going to turn into our parents and we're going to do the same thing with our kids. Exactly. Uh, we were watching a TV show called Forensic Files. Ever heard of it, Christine? No. What is that? FF, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> we were about five minutes into the episode and they were talking about a young woman who had gone missing in Japan in 2007. Okay, this is actually really creepy that it would be that spot on because there are a lot of episodes of forensic files out there. Obviously, our attention was grabbed and we watched intently as they described this woman and how she was moving family to family as a babysitter and a nanny. Then they started flashing photos of the woman and on our TV screen, it flashed a photo of my family with her. In no, the photo. they saw themselves on TV, which, by the way, like that's that can't be right. Like there's got to be like some consent form. To, like, You'd think so. The, the, or maybe it was just blurred faces and they knew it was the maybe and they were like that's my dress yeah um <laughs> that's my that's, that's those are my those are my heelys and my light up my shoes heelys. I don't know. wow that is to see yourself on tv and forensic files is something you really hope to never experience exactly yeah, yeah. um we had to pause the tv and rewind multiple times because we couldn't <laughs> believe it the- the screaming that would ensue. <laughs> I would be getting FaceTimes left and right from you if you were like, oh my gosh. why am I on Forensic Files? I would go right on Instagram Live or something and be like, I feel like I'm in a Twilight Zone. Well, as it turns out, my babysitter had gone missing a few years after she lived with us. <gasps> she had moved into her own apartment and soon after was just never heard from again. And little did we know her next door neighbor had become obsessed with her and within her first month oh, of living no. there, abducted and <gasps> murdered her. Oh my God. I don't want to go into details about it, but it was absolutely gruesome. She was declared <gasps> missing for four years before forensic analysis, <gasps> uh, forensic analysts discovered her killer. 
To this day, my family and I are so creeped out. We're also flabbergasted that there were photos of us on TV, but they and they never contacted us. See, okay. And they had never we'd never given photos of our family out with her in it to any. How did they get those? That's true. Ew. I don't ew, know. Ew, ew, ew. That's my creepy story, and that is why I drink. Cheers, friends. P.S. Thanks for the podcast. I'm on an eight hour drive today and slowly dying inside, but you two make Aww. it fun. Five stars. I don't oh, know if that's, that's to you nice. or to you and Zandy or you and me. Chef's kiss, Rachel. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, thank you, Sand Monster. So um, sweet. <laughs> You're our favorite Sand Monster today. Wait, I love that. I love that ending, but oh my God. That's horrific. I'm sorry. That's just horrific. I don't even know how else. That's to awful. Explain. Do you remember seeing a an episode? No. Like I, and there are like hundreds look. of episodes. I'm like, I don't even think I would register that. You know. Well, now if you saw that episode, at least you know. In one of those family photos, I'm someone's named Rachel, Rachel, and their pronouns are sand monster. Yeah, that's right. You'll be like, wow, there's a sand monster in Friends so of Kyle. Specific. I love it. Um, that's crazy. I and to be missing for four years. That's awful. It's really bad. It also makes me wonder, like, what was going on in that person's family life for four years no one contacted anyone or well it said that they were missing for four years oh right right right. so they knew they were missing that's that she was my head i had painted it out that like no one even knew no no it said she they were like looking for four years till somebody a forensic analyst yikes okay i'll have to go uh find that episode oh my gosh is this the last one oh this is going really sad fast i mean it is going really sad sad. (laughs) and sad it's not going awesome um (laughs) okay um yeah, if you're here for awesome, it's just not gonna happen for you. Yeah, I'm so try sorry. Again. Try again. Next. I'll wait. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is an email from Shady Sadie. She her pronouns. I love it. She her say Shady Sadie. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Uh, it's called listener story. True crime just got a little too true for my taste. Oh, oh boy. Did I ask for true crime? Is that what's happening? I must have because these know. we usually only get ghosty ones. I don't know. Oh, well, that one was a ghosty with the fire and the guy in the. The oh, chef, right. the, who never, knows who knows anything. anyway i'm into it whatever it is okay <laughs> hello eva oh. that's it <laughs> okay first of all thank you so much for choosing my narcolepsy story a couple episodes ago do you oh, remember that i remember the yeah. narcolepsy story it's because we were like let's Fascinated. talk about narcolepsy uh-huh. ourselves yep for a while okay i couldn't believe it when i heard christine read it i didn't want to write again and clog up your inbox when i already got a story shared oh. this is a two a two timer yeah. have you ever had that I don't, I don't know. Maybe. But probably that, not many. Probably not many. But then I found something that completely shook my worldview, and I just have to tell someone about it. I'm from a very small town in rural Minnesota, and not a whole lot ha- – I feel like I remember Shady Sadie now because it's a very specific name. I don't remember Shady Sadie, but I'm still – I'm impressed all over again. I think maybe name. we called her that. Oh. Like, I think maybe we said that. That – I like then, when I just take credit, I'm like, I am. If we that. did, I'm so <laughs> impressed with us. Yeah, I mean, you came up with Sand Monster, so. You know what? We're you're on a roll. Relay that to Zandy real Sandy, quick. Sandy, I like don't know if that's true, so just ignore me. Okay. I'm from a very small town in rural Minnesota, and not a whole lot happens there. It's the kind of town where no one locks their doors and all those cliches, but back in 1986, a woman named Nancy Doherty was found dead in her home. She had been beaten, assaulted, and strangled. She oh. fought back so the police were able to collect DNA from her murderer from underneath her fingernails. That always freaks me out. Yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't match any DNA in the criminal database at the time. There were no leads, and the case went cold almost immediately. Like all uncomfortable topics in small towns, nobody brought it up, and it was slowly forgotten about. My family didn't move to town until 1996, so we weren't even aware of the murder. So what does this have to do with me? Well, my mom works at a therapy center for the mentally and physically disabled. It is not an easy job. Because America cares so much about its disabled population, their funding is basically non-existent. So my mom and her coworkers are overworked and underpaid. Well, what a, what a shock yeah. to my system. Yikes. Not. <laughs> Um, yeah. It takes a lot of compassion, I bet, strength and love to do what she does, and not very many people are able to do it. Well, your mom sounds like a badass. There's an extremely high turnover, turnover rate because very few people are willing or able to give the clients the kind of support they need. My mom has worked there for almost 20 years, and for the last 10 of those years, she had a partner named Mike. Ooh. This is when the music starts. Mike. Mike was amazing at his job. He was kind, he was patient, and he was competent. The clients all loved him and he was great with them. He and I worked on the center's float for oh, he and I worked for the center's on the center's float for the 4th of July parade every year since 2011. He would always buy us root beer and help me fundraise for all of my school trips. Sounds I was like a pillar of the community. It sounds like a hashtag pillar to killer. Oh, POC is what pillar of community. We need a new acronym for that. 
Oh. That's not going to work. <laughs> That's not going to work anymore. Pillar of the community. I guess we should just spell it out. Pillar yep. of the community. Um, He and I, right. He, Yeah. I even used to babysit his children before I left for college. A real pillar is what I got to say. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a real pillar. From pillar to killer. A few months ago, one of Mike's family members submitted DNA to one of those genealogy websites. Oh, boy. I bet you can see where this is going. Through that sample, they were able to figure out that it was Mike's blood underneath Nancy Doherty's fingernails. <gasps> oh, <gasps> well, pillar to killer. Am Shit. I right? Like, big time. Big time. He was arrested and taken into custody three days ago. Holy, holy No hell. wonder. This is shady, Sadie. This email is from August 15th. So this is like really recent. Like it's literally last couple like days. seven days ago. So this week. Yeah. Holy shit. Are you like our new reporter? Are you going to like send Shady your, Sadie. Shady Sadie. On the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Reporting live from the streets of small town Minnesota. Okay. It was Mike's blood underneath Nancy's fingernails. He was arrested and taken into custody three days ago. This has absolutely shaken my perception of reality. I'm still reeling and cannot make sense of it. Mike's honestly one of the nicest people I know, and to think he's even capable of murder is beyond my suspension of disbelief. My mom is absolutely devastated. I guess some people really aren't what they seem. Mm. Anyways, thanks for reading. Stay safe, Team Wine. You know, it's always <sighs> shocking to me that let's let's say I, I'm a pillar of the community. No, you are, certainly. That's, sure. I say it all Who the time. Who also is a killer. Like, right, correct. You invented the term. phrase pillar to killer. Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Only a pillar would come up with that phrase. No, but like if I <laughs> if I had murdered someone. Yeah. Maybe it's because like I'm like too like. My, Paranoid. Anxious. Or, yeah, emotional or empathetic. I imagine to be a killer like you're you're probably. I imagine to be like. A, not on the same wavelength as I am. Yeah, right I think now. it depends on this scenario, but it sounds like this was pretty cold blooded murder. Yeah. yeah. If I if I did something like that and then. Even if I got away with it, like my paranoia would eat me alive. Like I couldn't be a pillar of the community and so happy and kind and everyone knows me as this friendly person. I would be like known as like the very tense, jumpy person who was like (laughs) the one "Ah." who's always like like, scared every time. Like, yeah. And then later when I got caught, people would be like, that makes sense. Like people would probably call in and be like, there's something to check out there. Yeah. There's someone is very skittish. This person working on the parade float is really (laughs) questionable. (laughs) Exactly. So I, I, in like a very sick way i'm always like kind of impressed and intrigued by like how serial killers can just do that but i guess they also well, have a different yeah brain chemistry. i feel like obviously we have no room to make any diagnoses but like if you think about um people who have sociopathic and psychopathic tendencies and can just like put it up they don't care just like compartmentalize and just know what people want and what people are looking for in a f- pillar of the community and work on and babysit my kids and I, I mean, can you imagine being the kid or the wife who literally had no idea? I mean, if if Shady Sadie had no idea and worked so closely with this yeah. person and then like, I imagine his family doesn't know, right? Like until now. It's got to be, I want, and that is a whole like could be its own drama television series because sure. it's like, what if the, like his his partner knew something was a little off but yeah. didn't know what? And then you find out like a whole like groundbreaking news like that well and even with the gold state killer there's all that guilt associated like if you watch the hbo document i should have known like how did i not see it right Right. or like so i mean and obviously that guilt is you know not anybody's not your fault but it's just wild i think about it very often i'm like what if allison is a serial killer yeah I think about it too often, but I well, think, I think, I, I think I, about it enough for someone who has a true crime. We podcast. both live with her, so hopefully not. Because <laughs> I think if if she were a serial killer, we'd both be in big trouble. So I would be surprised, but I also would be like, I thought about it enough times, where like I sh- at this point oh, I should have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, Allison's not a serial killer. Not I, yet, don't think, I don't think. I don't think it's also nice to know that I don't have the. Im- the lack the i guess the lack of emotional capacity to be a serial killer like oh, if yeah. everything else goes wrong in my life is like we would be the worst murderers because we would be like if am I, I have a secret if i ever did anything i would just turn myself in it's like i have i have way too much like guilt you and i would have to tell each other cuz we can't keep se- like we oh, would tell each absolutely. other immediately absolutely uh, anyway this sucks. anyway sorry I'm sadie i'm so sorry that shady is, sadie it's really scary and that must just turn your like you said like beyond your suspension of disbelief like, also imagine your paranoia about now everybody you know how do you trust anybody like that guy that seemed great shatter your trust yeah yikes okay well, i'm not surprised three days into that information you needed to reach out to somebody yeah so. and i'm glad you did and um i'm glad that you may be one of our first two furs ever and if yeah. there was one before i 
sorry, I probably already yelled about that before. But as you can see, we don't even remember who invented Shady Sadie. Uh, I'm going to take the credit. Yeah. I, probably just you. I've just Shady determined Sadie? that it's us, even though like <laughs> nobody gave me any sort of inkling that it was. We're going to get 30 mil being like, it's just simply it was me i created that yeah yeah it was me (laughs) sand monster sadie the sand monster yeah okay anyway thank you for listening to us ramble and rant thank you listeners for sending (laughs) in your own stories and making our lives wonderfully simple and that we just get to enjoy your stories and be creeped out and be creeped out surprises um if you would like to uh send in your own stories uh, you can do that on our website, and that's why I drink.com. You can email us, but it's definitely much easier to do it through the website. There's a submission form and everything. It makes everything very uh, clean and easy for you. That's right. Um, and other than that, we tune into our uh, regular programming. Yeah, every Sunday. Every Sunday. The Lord's Day, as I like to say. The day of rest. <laughs> day of the Sabbath. <laughs> anyway, thanks, everybody. Um, and we'll see you next time. And that's why we drink. drink.